Hey Canucks fans, we may soon get clarity and confirmation of the JT Miller trade. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram, I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks take all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Monday, May the 4th. This is where you get Canucks insight that's both positive and timely. Well, thanks to all of you who joined me for my live stream last night. A lot of fun went by very quickly, as always. My lovely daughter, Kayla, came down for the first time in a while, and that went really well. And then we had a great chance to chat afterwards about everything from the Canucks to the 50th jersey, you know, that vlog I did about my friend Dave's suggestions, how to improve it, the black skate jersey, to the draft potentially happening in June. And that's kind of what I want to talk about even more today. I did a vlog a couple days ago about JT Miller and the fact that the Canucks may have a chance to renegotiate terms of that trade with the New Jersey Devils. And I want to explore that a bit further because more details have come into light in the past couple of days. So let's back up. June 22nd, 2019, the Vancouver Canucks traded goalie Merrick Morazic. Uh, they traded the third round pick of that draft, the 2019 draft, along with a conditional pick to the Tampa Bay Lightning for JT Miller. We know how good JT Miller's season uh, was with us, so we don't have to talk about that too much. We just know that we, we got a really good top three, top line, first line player, great leader, all those things. But let's talk about the tr the pick that went, the conditional 2020 draft pick. It was very simple. The condition was this. If the Canucks made the playoffs in 2019-2020, so this season, then that first round pick would go to Tampa Bay. If the Canucks did not make the playoffs in 2019-2020 this season, then the Canucks would retain their first round pick. And no matter what, the 2021 pick would go to the Tampa Bay Lightning, what you call an unprotected pick. So it could be first overall, if the Canucks win the lottery, they'd have to give it off, uh, give it away, or it could be 30th or 31st if the Canucks somehow won the Stanley Cup, whatever it is. So that was the condition, right? 2020, it was if the Canucks make the playoffs, then Tampa gets the pick. And in 2020, the Canucks do not make the playoffs. Canucks keep the pick. And 2021, it becomes unprotected to Tampa. So that was the terms of that conditional draft pick. Then Tampa traded that pick to the New Jersey Devils in the Blake Coleman trade at the trade deadline. So for all intents and purposes, now we can talk about the New Jersey Devils owning that pick. So let's talk about these conditions now. Because as I mentioned a couple of days ago, with the NHL season up in the air, and especially the fact that they're pushing, it sounds like everything's pushing towards a June draft. Part of the June draft is you have to figure out what the standings are. What the standings are, because that determines draft order, right? The, the, generally, uh, notwithstanding the lottery, the draft order is the reverse order of standings. So there's a couple of things that are in play that I, I touched on, I believe it was on, on Saturday, but I want to expand, or Friday or Saturday, but I want to expand a bit today. Uh, if... It sounds like the draft is going to happen in June. Like we're waiting for confirmation and we got, it's kind of interesting how it works. Gary Bettman in the NHL basically suggested or recommended it to the, the board of governors and the GMs. Technically the board of governor GMs do not vote. They don't have to approve it, but obviously it's in, in Gary Bettman's best interest if he gets them on side or the majority of them on the side or the, the big influencing influencers on side. So that's going to happen over the next couple of days. So all the experts in industry, whether you agree with it or not, they're, they're agreeing that it's likely going to happen that the draft will be in June as opposed to at the end of this season, whatever the season ends up to be. So let's presume for this vlog that the draft will indeed be June, whether it's mid-June, early June, late June. It's going to be next month before any hockey is played. So the two main factors, and I touched on these, like I said, a few days ago, but I want to expand on them. Number one, it, the one thing that we can confirm is that the NHL will go by points percentage. So it's black and white. If they go by points percentage, Vancouver, not just a wild card, they actually finished third in the Pacific. They finished third in the Pacific. Um, so from a playoff standpoint, they're in. And the most important thing to know is they're considered a playoff team, whether you're a third in Pacific or a wild card. They're in the bottom three or four spots. And I've, I've read that basically the the Canucks would own the 18th overall draft pick. So that's, in essence, you know, second from the bottom, right? Because the 16 teams make it, um, the 16 teams that make the playoffs. So then you go basically from 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18. And then, and then 17, 16. Oh, so they're third from the bottom, if that makes sense, right? Yeah, so basically they'd be picking 18th overall 
and that's not considered a lottery pick. Uh, you, they won't be eligible for the lottery because um, only non-playoff teams are eligible for the lottery. One other thing, actually, a very important side note. It sounds like the way that they're going to do the lottery is go back to the old 2012 method. So we're talking almost um, a decade ago where only the bottom five teams will have a chance to win the lottery. So not only the bottom five teams as opposed to all 15 non-playoff teams, but then they're only going to draw one ball or one lottery combo. So only one team shoots up to first and then they're not doing three different lotteries like they do now. They only do one lottery. So that means only one of the top five teams, the bottom five teams, is a better way to say it, will win the lottery. And Ottawa actually has two of those because one of them is from San Jose. So the bottom five teams will have a chance. It's Detroit, it's Ottawa, it's someone else, and it's LA. I can't remember who it is right now. Uh, but obviously another sucky team. Detroit, Ottawa, LA, and I forgot to look it up, but I'm, I'm sure you guys will know. Maybe it's New Jersey. I don't know. It's not New Jersey. It's, uh, anyways, you guys can figure out. I know, I know Ottawa's in there. I know Detroit's in there. I know LA's in there. And there's one other team. But only one of those five teams can then win the lottery. And then it goes but without saying then, but I'll say it, that that means every other team can only move up one spot. So you don't have to worry about a 13th or 14th pick winning the lottery and moving up to number one. So that then that makes it uh, almost impossible for a Stanley. You know, you can see they could be worried about a team that's on the bubble somehow goes on a crazy run in the playoffs, wins the Stanley Cup, and then also wins a draft lottery. So then you have a Stanley Cup winner and you have another one pick. Um, that's not going to happen because they're basically, it sounds like they're going to only the bottom five can win the lottery. Why is that important? Well, going back now to this JT Miller example, so stick with me, we're almost there, is the Vancouver Canucks deemed a lottery, you know, a playoff team. That means they are going to pick 18th overall. And according to the conditions of this trade, then that means New Jersey would get the Canucks 18th overall pick with no chance to win the lottery. So the Canucks don't have to worry that they're giving away a lottery pick to the New Jersey Devils. And basically, um, that that's the way it would go right now if they went by points percentage and if Vancouver and New Jersey agree to this, you know, to keeping the integrity of this trade. And the reason why I say if they agree, so that's the second part I want to talk about, is I talked about this a couple days ago as well. There's language in the memo from the NHL on Friday that says teams will be given the opportunity to renegotiate a deal, to come up with a, uh, you know, um, a, a mutually agreeable um, new trade, basically. Renegotiate terms of the trade. And I talked about this a few days ago, but if you're Vancouver and let's say... When I talked about this a few days ago, though, we didn't know that the NHL was going to go by points percentage for sure. So I speculated that if the Canucks were betting on themselves to make the playoffs, then they should give their pick to New Jersey this season, right? Because it's going to be a bottom half of the first round. But if the Canucks somehow thought they weren't going to make the playoffs, then they should keep their pick because it potential to uh, not just say win the lottery, but at least be in the top half of the league, right? But it sounds like that's a moot point now if the NHL has decided to go by points percentage. So then the other thing, though, is New Jersey could raise a stink and they could say, well, you know, maybe the Canucks would have fallen out of playoff position, right? Because what happens if you do the draft and then the Canucks, New Jersey gets the Canucks 18th overall pick, but then the Canucks fall out of the playoffs. They, they, they suck for whatever reason over the past the last 13 games. And then they actually move up to like ninth or 10th overall in the league uh, from the bottom or maybe better put 20th or 21st or 22nd where they're picking the top 10 now by reverse order of standings not including a lottery win so you can see why new jersey might not like that so then uh you know i saw pierre lebrun suggest maybe new jersey they they scrap the 2020 condition and then they bump the whole trade by a year so now the conditions are 2021 or 2022. It'll be the same things you have to be concerning yourselves with. Will the Canucks make the playoffs? Will they bet on themselves? Will it be uh, you know a, a 2021 pick or 2022 pick? But you can see Pierre Lebrun's point is New Jersey might come out and say, um, well, let's move all the conditions to next year where there's more certainty. So then 2021 will be the first of the two years. And if the Canucks uh, make the playoffs, then that means um, they, the New Jersey will get the 2021 pick. And if the Canucks don't make the playoffs, then that means the 2022 pick will be unprotect unprotected. So um, obviously the, the bad part for New Jersey, the, 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 the negative to this is that they have to wait at least another year to fulfill, to reap the benefits of their their part of the trade with Tampa, right? That Tampa originally did with Vancouver. But that's another scenario as well. So you can see that is very complicated. And you might say, well, Clay, this is the exact same vlog you did three days ago. No, I think the biggest change from three days ago is that we now know that the NHL is going to go with points percentage 
as the determining factor for playoff positioning, or at least, yeah, playoff positioning with respect to draft order. So again, the Canucks would finish in the playoffs, inside the playoffs, and that means counting from the bottom, they'd be 14th from the bottom of the 16 playoff teams. Uh, they'd be 14th from the top, I should say. And then that, that, that means the 18th overall pick in the first round would go to New Jersey. So my question of the day to you, Vancouver Canucks fans, is do you like that? Do you think that's a good scenario for the Vancouver Canucks that it's the 18th overall pick that goes to New Jersey and it's done this year because the Canucks are considered a playoff team at cutoff and the condition of the trade state that the Canucks make the playoffs first rounder then goes to New Jersey this season. The second question of the day is, do you think this is going to happen? Do you think, or do you think New Jersey is going to come back and try and negotiate um, a deal with the Canucks to change that? But why would the Canucks negotiate, um, you know, why would the Canucks um, want to negotiate if that's the way they think the league is going to rule anyways? So you can see why it's complicated, but you can see that there's a bit of being a, a bit of an update from three days ago. And if you watch my video three days ago and you're saying this one's the exact same thing, well, I apologize for that. But I, I do think it's a small wrinkle that adds some certainty as well to a very uncertain situation. So Canucks fans, let me know what you think uh, below. I hope you followed all of that. Uh, I'm sure you did because you guys are all smart viewers. And once again, I thank you for joining me last night. And I look forward to catching up with you throughout the week. I got a couple of Zoom chats lined up, which I'll, I'll share those, uh, those names tomorrow as we go. But I'm excited to have some more uh, people um, chatting with them on Zoom getting to know them and checking in on them as well. So today, subscribe if you like to, like this video if you like to. Be safe, be healthy, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Have a great day, God bless, and go Canucks go.